So far, we have been dealing with velocity not changing. When velocity is remaining constant in a problem, we say that that is a uniform velocity. The world is not made up of uniform velocities. In reality, velocity changes frequently. And the concept or term that we call this is acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity and is, is the what creates non-uniform motion uh, in nature. What causes acceleration? Well, we'll talk about that down the road, but the acceleration of an object causes the velocity to change. So whenever anything speeds up or slows down, acceleration occurs. You can see the equation for acceleration on your screen. This equation is very similar to the equation that we use for average velocity. The main difference is that instead of displacement being in the numerator, velocity itself is in the numerator. We will use this equation to help us describe how fast something is getting faster. The units of average velocity uh, or average acceleration are the numerator is made up of meters per second, that is the units of velocity, and the denominator is made up of the unit seconds. So the units of acceleration are meters per second per second, or how fast something is getting faster or how fast something is getting slower. This sometimes is written as meters per second divided by seconds, which simplifies down to meters per second times 1 over second, or meters per second squared. It is okay to write meters per second squared on an exam or in your homework to describe the units of acceleration, but the reality is that when we are dealing with uh, the concept of acceleration, you want to be thinking about it as how fast something gets faster. And so accel acceleration is going to be meters per second per second. If I have a car going down the road at 10 meters per second, and the acceleration on that car, the acceleration on that car The acceleration on that car is the acceleration on that car is If I have a car going down the road at 10 meters per second, and the acceleration on that car is 2 meters per second squared, or 2 meters per second per second, what that is going to say to us is that after one second, the car is going 12 meters a second. After two seconds, the car is going 14 meters a second. After three seconds, the car is going 16 meters a second, so on and so forth. The Each second, the acceleration is causing the velocity to change by two. Acceleration can be both positive and negative. We avoid the phrase deceleration in physics because it can, be, can create some confusion. What we like to say is that if I have an object and it is moving to the right, then we call that positive, and there is an acceleration on that object and it is also to the right, then the object is speeding up. If I have an object and it's moving to the left, and I have, so that's velocity is to the left, and I have an acceleration to the left, it is also speeding up. In both cases, the car's average speed is going up. 
in the case on the left, it is moving to the left. In the case to the right, it's moving to the right. So there are some differences, but when the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction, it is the idea that we call speeding up. When acceleration and velocity are in different directions, for example, we have a velocity that is positive to the right and we have an acceleration that is negative to the left, then the object is slowing down. And so slowing down is a relative term that describes getting closer to zero. It doesn't mean it's getting more negative. It just means that the actual velocity is getting closer to zero. Acceleration is a vector quantity. And just like all vector quantities, we can uh, add and subtract the, the, the accelerations together using vector mathematics. We'll talk about that later uh, in this course. Velocity, uh, a velocity time graph, like a position time graph, can give us information. In the position time graph, the slope was the slope was delta x over delta t. The change in the y-axis, y is representing displacement here, uh, over the change in t, the change in time. So slope was equal to uh, equal to velocity. In a velocity time graph, the slope would be uh, delta v over t, which is actually going to give us acceleration. So the slope of a position time graph is going to give us velocity. The slope of an acceleration time graph is going to give us acceleration. Objects that move equal distances and equal times are uniform. I started this discussion by talking about that, and therefore there is no acceleration. When an object is not moving equal distances and equal times, then acceleration is occurring. Here are some graphical representations of what we're talking about. Here we have a car. It has a velocity. It has no acceleration on it, and so the velocity vector stays the same length for each of these pictures. The car is moving at the same velocity. In our next picture, we now have an acceleration. The acceleration has caused the car to speed up. The red vector is becoming longer as we move to the right. So we have an increase in overall, accelerate, overall velocity because of the acceleration. In our next scenario, the velocity and the acceleration are in opposite directions. And so as I apply the acceleration to the car, the velocity decreases. Now, one thing that you need to keep in mind is that an acceleration in, like the one you see here on this screen, applied long enough will actually cause the car to speed up again. If I keep applying this acceleration, the car will eventually stop, and then it will start moving back in the opposite direction. So we go from a scenario where the car has a velocity vector and an acceleration vector that are opposite, that is causing the car to slow down. When it reaches zero, it will start speeding up in that opposite direction. So one of, one of the things, again, we need to be careful with is the concept of deceleration, because deceleration takes us to zero, but it doesn't take us beyond. So using terms like positive and negative acceleration are going to make this a uh, better um, a better uh, scenario for us to have a better interpretation. We're going to pick up in our next video with some graphing. Uh, and to uh, do that, I do want to remind you that the two equations on the screen are uh, equations that you need to become familiar with and you need to be able to uh, adapt and modify to solve for the 
uh, different variables in different scenarios. We will keep practicing, but uh, make sure that you have these equations and that you can solve for uh, each of the variables in the equation if you have the other data. Uh, again, next time we will talk more about graphing. Have a great day.